I just thought the recording. And I'm so hi. So bad here. There. How's that? Better? Yep, better. So it's recording now. So hi everybody. Uh, just a few things before we start. Uh, I have several announcements. So I will switch. Uh, so I announce the maintenance window next Monday on the mailing list. So basically, it will, it will affect adapt.jenkins.io, the account app, and the telemetry service. So normally, everything should be fine, but who knows what happened uh, when we touch the services. The second thing is almost everybody uh, complete the poll regarding the meeting uh, time slots. I think I'm only, only a leg is missing there. So I see I voted. Um, yeah, just uh, one hour ago, so. Yeah, okay, so maybe. Yeah, so now I ask you your results. Um, I think we will just keep the Tuesday uh, right now. But um, I put it public so you can see the result of the other people. Um, but we'll probably keep it on Tuesday. Uh, it seems to be easier. Um, so that's regarding the poll. I was just wondering if it would be a good idea to just do uh, this meeting every two weeks instead of one week. I don't know if you have any input on it. So for me, it helps meeting weekly. I'm not up to speed enough yet on infra, and I feel like well, last night's last night's outage of SSL on issues that Jenk reminded me I'm not watching monitoring systems. There are all sorts of things that could go surprised. So it will help you to keep it on on, on a weekly basis. Yeah, I, I I assume for you, Olivier, it's a thir maybe thirty minutes of overhead, but for me, it's thirty minutes of of keep myself intensely focused. Okay, perfect. So then let's let's keep it um, every week. That that's fine. Um, so let's continue different topics. So the main task that I'm working on right now is to migrate the the old cluster Kubernetes cluster to the new one. So as I said, there is a maintenance window next week. Um, and part of that migration, we also drop uh, evergreen.jenkins.io, so we will not migrate that service. So that's the main thing that I'm working on um, until next week. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, everything should be fine. The other big initiative that we work on with uh, Timja and uh, LK, which was the, to deploy the refactoring image with the plugins of Jenkins.io. So we first tried to deploy the service yesterday morning, then we discovered some issues which were specific to the infrastructure projects. So we just deploy a new service called beta.plugins.jenkins.io in order to test it there before we, we deploy plugins, before we upgrade plugins.jenkins.io. So I think everything is fine now. At least the IR that we found uh, is not related to the refactoring work. So after the meeting, I will probably just upgrade that service um, as well. Um, that was the first, the, um, another initiative. And finally, now that I have access to the Azure account, which is third, yes, sure. Sorry, pull back on the, so plugins.jenkins.io will switch to a static generated site uh, as the primary site shortly? Is that? Yes, uh, that, that's the purpose, yeah, that's the goal, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, so if you want to have a look, you can just go on beta the plugins of Jenkins I've seen it. Looks great. Uh, feels very responsive. How's the generation process? It's, uh, it's, it's great. The only, the only downside that I notice now, but it's not related to the, to the static site. Uh, it seems like um, Sometimes the documentation is not uh, imported in the um, in the front end, so you just see a link to the GitHub readme. But I think it's more related to a um, GitHub rate limit or something like that. But there is no way to log that. I mean, the, um, we don't have that information from the application, so we should probably export that yeah. error or something. Like there that. is a task somewhere to at the GitHub uh, read API limits to monitoring. So if I understand correctly, when you switch to static plugin site, you put additional stress. Because each time you generate uh, it uh, during the run, you do a lot of GitHub requests. So there is that. That's, a, that's a one of the first thing. But the second thing as well is that we have multiple container running on the Kubernetes cluster. So each time we query, for example, the old service, it, it goes to a different container that it could go to the new service. So we have multiple containers running at the same time. And they all do the, the same query, basically. So it's right now, it's really not efficient. Yeah. So it would be it would be interesting to find a way to just generate uh, that request once and once uh, once like every yeah. 
it's just looking at that and key cash flow results mm -hmm. and being sure that the cash result is available for everybody for all the containers mm -hmm. Okay, so if you want to submit some patches uh, to the plugin site, uh, what is the current process? Just submitting pull request uh, towards the master branch so that it lands in better? Uh, or is it uh, something so, different? So now, right now, we don't have, so the beta will be disabled uh, once, so I will not keep the beta feature of the beta website once we merge everything and, uh, I mean, once we upgrade plugins at Jenkins.io, we won't have beta anymore because it's a manual procedure to deploy that at least for now because we never uh, put the process for that in place. Um, so you just just work on on the, the Git repository, the plugin site API, and um, mm -hmm. publish a Docker image and then update the hand charts that deployed that Docker image. Okay, that's good. I can I, I will update the documentation right at the mm -hmm. meeting. So. Um, yeah, if I understand correctly, the mobile layout was also fixed by Gavin Morgan. So I see some differences in layout. Yeah, the mobile is usable now. Yeah, the mobile is a lot better. Yes. Yeah, it, yeah, the look and feel for desktop view is a bit different, but yeah, I wouldn't say it's a blocker. We can always say. Uh, uh, at, uh, least, at least, at least, no, at least, no, at least now you can search for plugin information on your mobile, and it's a really huge improvement. Because in the past, when you were looking for let's say Kubernetes plugin, you had that huge uh, menu; it was not possible to to access the, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, the, the plugin information in the back. So you just had to you just had to type letters that were going invisible. Yeah, so, yeah that's that's really a really great improvement regarding the plugin site. Yeah. So I'll submit a couple of bugs. Uh, what I noticed is that uh, basically there is no link back to the plugin search or landing from the plugin pages. But yeah, it's a trivial thing to fix. I think I think that was intentional. Mm -hmm. Really? I, I think so. There was some discussion. The pull request has a lot of discussion. If you want to take a look. Yeah. So yeah, I'll take a look. Yeah, it, uh, after that, it embeds better into Jenkins I.O. Uh, understand that. So, okay, I'll take a look. Um, another topic that I also worked on over the week was uh, to grant access to the Azure account to multiple people. So I granted um, Global Administrator to Oleg, Alex Earl, as board member. Um, I only grant that access to Oleg and Alex because they are involved in the infrastructure and it would be useful to have them there. Um, I also grant that access to Jesse because he was working on, uh, at least it was investigating some issues with the incremental Azure function. Um, but at least for now, it's all. The main reason to that is we cannot put in place some fine grain um, control on who has access to what. So either you have access uh, to everything you have read access to everything, but we cannot say, okay, you only have access to that uh, specific services, for example, for now. So um, there are two possibilities. Either we stick to this, the, the current workflow, so only a few people have access to the Azure accounts, or we decided to put in place some rules, and then we have to, to increase the Azure Active Directory subscription to a more advanced one with more features. So um, it means that we'll have to pay either six or nine dollar per month per, per user. So um, mm -hmm. obviously putting uh, those rules in place and adding more people is also time consuming. So at least for now, we'll just keep working like it is. Um, but it means that if there is anything wrong with any of the, any kind of the services running on Azure right now, we can now ping Alex or our Alex. Yeah, mm, there are some run books about Asia. Uh, I have access to them, but I'm not sure about Alex L. Maybe it's uh, something uh, to discuss with him. So, uh, so for the other people who don't know about the runbook, so we maintain some documentation for the people working on the infrastructure projects. Mm -hmm. um, basically, the runbooks was put in place like to to solve any issues, like um, something reported by PageRDQ, whatever. It was mainly focused on the um, Puppet infrastructure. So most of the thing um, explained what to do when one of the services is down, um, but we should definitely update that with all the um, all the new services that are now running on Kubernetes. Um, that's 
that's yeah so i would i would check if alex has access to that and then i will also check to see if we can just duplicate some some documentation and maybe update the documentation there mm -hmm. so if you are interested um to if you are interested to 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 be on call with the patch duty feel free to ask um and so the main advantage if you are on code of course we would see what are the kind of issues but it means also that uh, i would have to grant you different accesses and so like the run books uh, like to the infrastructure and so on so there are two kind of accesses either you have access to the to the to the azure accounts or you also have access like on the machines themselves so let's say for example see at the jenkins.io it's all you to ssh on the machine and see what's wrong with the let's encrypt client that do not generate the new certificate for example, mm -hmm. so those are the kind of those are the kind of issues that we detect based on pager duty alarms, and we try to fix them when they occur. And if we cannot uh, fix them properly, we just update the runbook to just say, okay, if it happens, just do this. Um, yeah, and a last thing about the pager duty. So something that we put in place with pager duty, the idea was to have a follow the sun policy. So. Only people uh, people are only on call during them their I mean day to day work like uh, nine, nine nine to five, um, and so we try we try to spread the load on the different time zones. Um, but the main the main challenge that we have right now is most of the people who contributed and help on the Jenkins Infra project does not anymore have the time to work on. So if you are interested to to help with uh, those tasks, feel free to ask, and we can definitely organize a small meeting to onboard and explain. Um, what to do when something is wrong. So in order to be inserted into the pager duty rotation, I just need to send you email or send it to the infra list? Um, yeah, sure. Send just an email on the infra list uh, so okay. we can discuss. Uh, there is no strict rules because if you have, if you are basically, if you are on pager duty uh, and you have to, to deal with some issues, I also have to grant you um, privilege access like to, uh, to admin machines and so on. So it's not, there is nothing like, okay, if you contribute for three years, you have access to the, to the infrastructure, basically. So it's, I prefer to send an email on publicly. And so if someone wants to raise a concern or whatever, he can, he can say, and otherwise I would just grant access. I think it's better and it's more transparent. Great. Otherwise that's pretty old for me. So I don't know if you have, um, we can do a round table if you want to, to, uh, to, to speak about something specific. Is there any news on the certificate for the release process? So you're speaking for the um, code selling certificate, you mean? Yes. Yes. So I had a discussion, sort of discussion with Dan Lopez last week. And so they are still um, in contact with the, between DigiCert Digi and the CDF um, to move this forward, but uh, nothing yet at the moment. So they open a new issues, so I can just um, share that with you. I showed that an RC, so you can. Uh, this is the issue. So I just said that. Um, I just told to Dan Lapez that if it does not move forward, I mean, if it does not work, maybe it's time to, to just look at a different provider. I mean, I have no visibility of what are the kind of issues. It's just legal. It's just, so I just yeah. I don't. I don't know. I don't have much information there. But it's definitely blocking for uh, the work on the automated release work. Any other question? Otherwise, I think we can stop here and just go back to RSC. So one, two, three. Thanks for your time, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye.